Hallo, good morning. Yeah. Um, I'd like to introduce Jeremy, Jeremy Zimmermann. He's going to talk about um, ways to defend our digital freedom in a time where every day um, we get more and more uh, laws passed that, um, yeah, that are very negative for our digital freedom. So give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Hello. Guten Tag, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for waking up so early, hacker time speaking. Um, I had a very good joke for introducing this speech, but I forgot it. So uh, we'll start without a joke anyway. Um, so I'm Jeremy Zimmerman. I'm the vice president of April, um, the main organization, nonprofit in France about promoting and defending uh, Libre software. Free as Freedom software. Um, is it me or is there some echo in the, in the mic? Uh, hello? The echo is, is okay? Oh, okay. Um, so our association has more than 1,700 members today. Um, corporate members such as uh, Sun Microsystems, Thales, and big corporate players who uh, believe in what we do. Uh, the association was founded in 96 by uh, basically a few hackers, computer nerds, we shall say. And uh, the, the main mission of promoting uh, Libre software uh, was, after some time, not enough, because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as um, beautiful and pink and funny as it should have been, and uh, Lib Software was very soon under different forms of attack. So a mission of defending our freedom became a very important part of our activity. Um, we are truly aligned with the philosophy of the FSF, the GNU, the four basic freedom of free software, freedom to use the software, to copy the software, to study the software, to modify and distribute a modification of the software. We truly believe that those freedom in a digital world are the core of any other freedom. As Professor Larry Lessig says, code is law. You all know that um, very well-known sentence. So yeah, in the digital world, what you can do, what you cannot do, what people might know about you, how people show spy on you, control you, everything is made by software. So the democratic control and transparent control of what software do is for us an ess essential pillar of all of freedom. So um, this is how we do it, thinking first of all about the, the freedom of free software. And we were involved in the late, last years in a few campaigns, some of them you will see go a bit further than just the strict promotion and defense of free software. But in all of the case, uh, free software was directly menaced, and we had uh, to team up. We had to do things together in ways we hadn't envisioned before. We discovered many, many things about politicians, about the parliament, about the journalists, about how to campaign in a general form. And I'm here um, to tell you about all this, hoping that maybe some of our ideas and things we did would be, I don't know, inspiring uh, or helpful, and hoping that we might maybe talk about all this later on when it will be time for questions or after, after the talk. So the campaigns by themselves. Um, there's a big problem we're aware of, is that we French people do speak French. So it's a beautiful language for literature, for arts, for love, for many things, for cheese. Uh, whoa. The Sono might be allergic to cheese or something. <laughs> so. We do great things, but we do them in French. So basically, it means that 99% of the 
of the world just doesn't know about it. So we're in the process right now of trying to correct this as any NGO, nonprofit funded by its member, we got resource problems. But very soon we will have a decent website, I hope. And uh, that will allow us to more um, easily and regularly update English translations of the very important things we are doing. But the fact is that probably none of you, or not much of you, have heard about EUCD.info. How many of you have heard about EUCD.info? How many non-French people? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. So here is basically what the website looks like today. Um, it was initiated as a reaction to the EUCD directive. Um, how many of you don't know about the EUCD directive? Okay, so I'll make a quick, um, a quick review of it. Um, the EUCD directive is the equivalent of the American, uh, the US DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Like the DMCA, the EUCD is a um, transposition of an international treaty, a YPO, World International Property Organization Treaty. And like the American uh, DMCA, the EUCD is a very, very intelligent law um, that gives a legal protection to those so-called technical protection measures, or DRM, um, locking mechanisms that companies put on uh, artwork, whether it's music or video, and um, digital padlocks that forbids you to access any content in any other way than the ones intended by the producer, basically. So when you buy a copy-protected CD and try to listen to it in your car stereo player, there, it just doesn't work. And if you just copy this protected CD on a non-protected regular standard CD, then you make what they call a circumvention of the digital protection, the digital control mechanism. And as everybody <laughs> is able to do it, of course, you should make this illegal so people will stop doing it. So I won't extend about the, the logical <laughs> reasoning behind this thing. This is a very stupid law indeed. But the fact is that when you do free software, lib software, all you do is opening what you do, all you do is transparency, and everybody can alter the behavior of the software and of the computer. By nature, those tools, those DRM, never allow you to alter the, 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 the behavior of the computer, are closed, are secret, so you cannot know what they do. So when you got an artwork that you have legally paid, legally bought, that is contained in such a so-called protection, a control mechanism, and if you choose, like we do, only to use Libre software on your computer, then you cannot access it. The only way to access, access it sorry, would be to break that control mechanism to legally read the artwork you have just bought. So this is the root of the problem. The UCD directive was voted in 2001. At this time, we hadn't the resources. It just went like this. You know how it is in the European Parliament. And so we couldn't talk at this time, to the people who voted it into the European Parliament and went in some way there after the battle. So, starting in 2003, uh, people began with the UCD.info working almost full time, Christophe Espern and Loïc Dachary, to name them. Um, they began filling the website with documentation, core documentation, building dossiers. Uh, you see the 55 pages long version of the dossier, um, many uh, pointers to uh, legal text, uh, letters, notes, very synthetic notes, um, uh, arguments, and etc. etc. Build a very complete uh, documentation database was the main activity of EUCD Info for something like two years. So we are now in 2005. We have many contacts with legal people, with lawyers, already with some politicians, with journalists. P 
people began to know what it is about, but not that much. And then, um, yeah, we, um, of course, uh, um, extracted from all that data very synthetic, um, synthetic illustrations of everything we were saying. Uh, actually, after a few years of building the data, we could have very small list, bullet point list of what were really the, the problems of this text and were able, after the years, to explain it quite shortly, shortly in a very synthetic, synthetic way. Um, you might see here a few points such as generalized presumption of guilt for the public, censorship of free software authors, and aggravated responsibility for third-party acts. For those who know the EUCD, this is maybe quite new to you, and this is a very specific, specificity of the French transposition of EUCD. Some uh, extra bonus um, parts were added. Um, some we call the Vivendi Universal Amendments because they were written by the lobbyists, lobbyists of Vivendi Universal uh, during the process of writing the law on the very governmental part of, the, of the, the writing of the law. And those very stupid amendments stated that releasing a software that is mainly used for putting artwork without the consent of the author on the internet was illegal. So basically building Apache or any other server software. So there were some really specific and really nasty bits of law that were being added to the law before it went to the parliament. All this we tried to, to watch and to be aware of and to build yeah, those very synthetic arguments against them. And then, then it's Christmas almost Christmas. We're in the um, mid-November, almost end of November 2005, and we were told that the law shall be examined in two nights, the 21st and 22nd of December. You can imagine how full must be a parliament on the 21st and 22nd of December. Mm -hmm. So we got a very nasty bit of law that censors authors, that is a really strong distortion of competition in the field of distribution of content, um, that have extra bonuses where they want to filter the internet and so on, because all this was wrapped into a gift paper of, oh, this is for protecting the poor little authors who die, you know, because of internet. Mm. So, this was about the authors, yeah, and all this was perfectly normal, and this will be really quick, you know, two nights, and this is gone. And this is where we really activated the campaign. So, we got about one month, and we won't let this happen. Uh, basically, Vivendi Universal, Microsoft, Apple Corp, and all the corporations that were really interested into having this low passed didn't need us to make them a Christmas present. So, what we did at this stage was to launch a petition saying a very, very, very simple message that is basically no. We in France have a very strong tradition of saying no. <laughs> and... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It, it might be funny, but not all the time. Well. Um, so we had a very simple message saying, no, this is important matter. We don't want this law to be passed in those conditions, which was uh, actually an uh, express, express way, fast track procedure. So instead of making round trips between the Assemblée Nationale, which is the first chamber, and the Senate, that is the second one, instead of making different round trips, it just went once in the first chamber, once in the second chamber, and bye bye. So we just said, we don't want this. This is complicated matter. It should be discussed in a very democratic and uh, regular standard way. So um, this photo was taken on the um, 13th of December. The petition was launched on the 2nd of December, so a bit more than 10 days after. And we had 75, 